Hey guys, welcome back to Cosmonarchy Castovers. Yes, we are still going daily with this series, and I wanted to take a special moment here to congratulate us, ourselves, pat ourselves on the back. We have released Fraud Launcher 2. If you previously found it difficult to get Cosmonarchy installed, check the link in the description below because we're pretty sure we automated most of it for you. And of course, if you happen to have any troubles, well, leave a comment so we can sort that out. But I don't think you'll find too many issues left over. And speaking of things that we'll find, I want to know what we're going to find in these matches on germination. Nablime versus Hamster, continuing our series from earlier in the week. Nablime will be in the bottom right now, with Hamster being in the, in the top left. This map has officially been added to the Gauntlet. That is the first of two Gauntlet qualifiers that are going into Acropolis number one. If you were around when we were running Ascension tournaments, then you'll kind of recognize the format here from Ascension number seven, where we had the qualifier, which was still called the Gauntlet back then. Uh, but then we went into group stage, which is now battlements, and eventually went into the playoff stage, which is now the throne room stage. Very exciting renames. Just like we rename a bunch of units like Droleth, and scribe. We even rename things like the stages of tournaments because we think that they end up sounding more epic and cool. Um, at least that's part of the reason. Nothing to sniff at just yet as far as the builds, although we're about to find out if Nablime wants to go for a pool opener versus a hatch opener, but judging by the way that his worker is set up, yet he is going to expand first. Not a bad idea on a map like this. I mean, the choke is kind of wide. We did see the Zeths run on by in the previous round when Hamster was down in this location. You can do quick run bys if the walls aren't there. And we have we haven't really had walls as a metagame option for Cosmonarchy in a very long time, actually. Uh, we don't really have that many homegrown Brood War players playing as any race other than Zerg, funnily enough. Although uh, Urban earlier today, as of the day of recording, was talking to me about uh, playing as Terran. So maybe that'll change, even though obviously he's uh, a Zerg main in, in StarCraft 1. Nonetheless, we will see what Hamster wants to do as he scouts his opponent's opener. We are indeed going to have him confirm the Hatcherosk on the way, and eventually he'll pop in here and see the pool. So he'll know it's hatch first. He can choose what to do. Last time he decided to not make a military unit and instead drop a second gate. It looks like here he's going to go for the, the Nexus. And this is kind of something that I had mentioned in his uh, previous matches that I thought he could have expanded sooner. And indeed he will go ahead and drop the Nexus uh, almost immediately here on the medium ground. I say medium because this is technically high ground. I guess you could call this the low ground, but the low ground is all the way in the middle of the map. Come on, guys. Don't you know your map making terminologies? All right. Nonetheless, though, we do indeed have the scribe maintaining some visuals. There's going to be a pair of quasis that pop out over here in the natural four and a blind. And uh, Gauntlet A's matches are actually going to be taking place uh, today, the day of this video's release. So if you're interested in how people are making out as far as their uh, series are concerned, you can definitely check out the Discord server, also linked in the description. That's actually, funnily enough, that's something else that we should comment on in the Fraud Launcher. We should probably mention uh, or, or like incorporate like the Discord link or something so that people can join if they download it off the website and maybe don't know about our Discord server or whatever. Uh, the only setup step that the Fraud Launcher 2 does not facilitate is uh, actually the uh, VPN. That's the only thing that we don't automate yet. There's a chance that we might be able to. So more on that later. We do have a bit of a tier one rush coming out of Nablime as he powers on through. With th uh, six more Zets are on the way. So he is going to try to use those uh, very uh, limited power melee units here. A Warden is going to finish, but I think it's probably not long for this world. And unfortunately for Hamster, his combat unit that came out of this frontline gateway is indeed going to get a lot of very, very softened up. This was a second pylon, not a, not a Warden. He's going to lose a lot of workers as a result of this, but actually Nablime did power a lot uh, on military. So even though now we're starting to get into the situation where we're talking about equal workers, uh, you have to imagine uh, that with not, not losing a single Dracod in there, that's actually going to be very, very good for our Protoss player. Uh, not exactly total worker death like the last round, but, uh, you know, it's a thing. Looks like he's going to drop another Warden a little bit further back. See what he can accomplish here as the Zeths are thinking about darting on in. There is another Legionnaire behind here going in to try to shark in for a surround. It's not a bad idea per se. He does have more reinforcements coming. Nablime still trying to dictate the pace. I don't think this is something Hamster expects from a, a more greedy Zerg. Uh, diving on in with the Legionnaires. Three Zeths on that Warden. That will eventually get the cancel going. And you can hear there we have a custom uh, read for when the, the structure is canceled versus when it's just destroyed. So you, you won't hear that sound effect if it's uh, actually fully killed. 
And there you have it, yet another hold. So workers count slightly rising. An embassy, no less. And of course, he has this nexus down here that he can start to make workers for as well. So yeah, I think Hamster is definitely in a pretty good spot, although there are some workers being made by our Zerg player. And Nablime is going to be trying to maintain... I guess you could call it that this is like the tempo, right? He wants to have the tempo advantage. He wants to set the pace of the match. Uh, but his opponent is starting to poke on out. And poke is uh, the operative term with all those Legionnaires. I think the Quasis were spotted, so we are going to see those Legionnaires end up getting absolutely shredded by the Quasis. But the Dracodins will be more than enough to make up the difference after the fact. So uh, I guess this is kind of like a map reset situation here. Uh, you shouldn't really see either player having a significant advantage at this point. Uh, the Dracodins can't do too much versus Zeth Floods, and he doesn't actually know, Hamster doesn't know what Nablime has back at his base. So, you know, he's got to think about that. There is an Envoy on the way. Looks like a Zeth tries to dart on in to see. I don't, it, its vision range is so small, I actually don't think it saw the embassy there. So uh, right now... Nablime is not sure what kind of tech is afforded to him, but uh, even if he did see the embassy, the only thing that he can really be sure of is that Hamster is going to be going for more economy, which might actually be a mistake to think about because we do have a grand library here, and I did see an envoy queued up. I think it got canceled, but that might in, you know, whenever you see somebody queue a unit up, because first he queued up the artisan, then he queued up the envoy, and now he's got a witness on the way. He went through all that procedure, right? And I think what he's going to end up saying is, uh, you know, this is a storm drop. Because when I see a Grand Library right next to the Embassy, whenever you see Hamster put any structure right next to the Embassy, I, I suspect he's going to try to drop with that. Uh, this bug, by the way, with the cliff tiles has already been resolved, so don't panic over that. But that was something that was a bit silly uh, with the uh, the way that the game was working. Uh, the same is actually true up here. If you put a hatch up here, it would just spread into the tar, which is... Yeah, that's funny. And uh, these uh, these doodad sprites need to be re-indexed. That's something that I hope I'll remember to do after I do this cast over because I want this map to look pretty when it is uh, being played later on. As I mentioned, this will be played in the gauntlet, assuming people want to play on it. It's the latest map to be added, like a brand new map. So I wouldn't actually be surprised if instead of being added in that manner, uh, and immediately adopted. Some people may decide to look at it and be like, whoa, wait a second, I don't want this. Nablime has been uh, hopscotching, ferrying the Kagrins around. He's going to try to hold on to the double entrance here. This kind of reminds me a little bit of Sideshow, but it's much more compact, right? So you don't have to rotate uh, through as much space in order to uh, secure your third base. Something to uh, keep in mind. Scribes wandering around. We do have another pylon coming down over here. Third gate. I do like to see our players keeping their money a lot lower this round than the previous game. It's always something I'm trying to keep track of. And I try not to be too critical either when I see uh, players slipping up because the last game was very, very chaotic. And it caught me off guard. But, uh, you know, that kind of thing can happen to you. Especially when you're trying to maybe practice a new strategy or something. So the Avaleth is going to come out here. This is a favored move from Nablime, and I feel like not enough people really uh, punish the Zerg for sending a 50 gas transport detector out. Uh, but detection does give you the idea to see, or the ability to actually click on these structures and see what is being made out of them, as well as the progress bar. Uh, and crucially, Nablime has not scouted any army units, and that should be a bit of a red flag for him. But he's got double circuit and the bottom left entrance, uh, adding a third one there. He's already got triple circuit at the north entrance, so it kind of feels like Nablime is just A-OK -okay to take this third base location. I really don't think that he's going to be in too much of a, you know, trouble with a siege potential, but the Amaranths are pretty good if they can get up there, and actually there's more Amaranths here than I thought, so he is going to have to take his quasis and bring them on up. The Amaranths, you can see, staying alive for a really, really long time. Uh, they have the shield steal effect, so... The Dracodins focus firing onto the circuits. The Quasi is trying to actually focus fire the Dracodins if they can. And the Remorphs are coming up, but the Hydras are here. This should be cleared. Hydras ignore the armor of the Amaranths and the Dracodins. So, uh, yeah, not actually able to uproot the Zerg position here. Ends up just trading army for army, which usually favors Zerg because you're not actually spending more workers. Uh, and, you know, okay, maybe you're forcing them to make a lot of army units, but they can remax their army a lot faster. You can see the Hydra's trading very, very well versus the Dracodins. That particular interaction is very similar to Hydra versus Dragoon in StarCraft 1. So always keep that in mind. Uh, this probably looks weird to players, but yeah, the static def uh, detection is not really a thing in, in Cosmonarchy. Closest thing you have is tech nodes, like the Iral Iris for Zerg, the Atlas and Daedala for Terran, uh, but also the Lodestone for Terran. 
Uh, but you won't see detection on things like the Spraith or the Watchdog, which is uh, formerly known as the Missile Turret, stuff like that. Just stuff to keep in mind if you're adapting from StarCraft 1. It's a, it's a different look. We try to tried things a, a little bit differently over here. So again, we can see uh, Hamster, he's doing his best to focus down some of these defenses. The way that Zerg regression as a, as a cornerstone of their behavior works is that if you mutate a unit or structure, and then, uh, oh, he could have maybe caught that Avalith on the way out. You mutate a unit or structure, you uh, then will get that structure's original form back when the mutation dies. And that is something that recurses. So if you, for example, mutate a uh, Kagrant into a Circuth, and then the circuit into a tier two anti-surface defense, which we may see if this game continues to go long, then when the, the tier two anti-surface defense dies, oh, okay, it looks like uh, they had a pause. Uh, when the tier two uh, unit dies, then the tier one building is returned. And then if that building dies, then you'll get the K grid again. Uh, so that's just like one way to think about it, right? So it, it does go all the way down. Uh, and so I think it's pretty cool uh, as a mechanic. It does feel pretty zergy. We do have the Iral Iris coming down now with uh, both players. Uh, well, uh, Hams are taking his third base, but uh, Nibblein clearly ahead in the economics department. I feel like there wasn't really the timing to punish. Maybe a storm drop could have actually been a good move here for our Protoss player. I heard a cancel. I'm not sure what that was, but it looks like he's just trying to erect good defensive SimCity at his uh, third base as he puts in an ardent authority in the natural. So that's going to be for... I guess that's probably going to be for um, architects at some point for sieges. We did see this, the the uh, that sideshow match actually. Uh, the, the castover was called the last line of defense. If you want to go look it up, it's kind of recent. It was played before the uh, March Invitational B tournament happened. A second embassy. Now that's curious. And the Avalith once again flying on through just to spy on what's being made. Season Atreus in the. Uh, in the Grand Library, he's going to see the Architect queued up here at the Ardent Authority, uh, if he's being aware of that. A pylon block over here to stop any potential expansions towards 3 o'clock. Interesting. Interesting stuff. Yeah, I do think that the uh, with the Iris finishing, this is going to be a Spire. That's curious. Is he also... Okay, I was going to say, it wouldn't be a Nublime game without a Matrable Nest made, even if he wasn't able to use it. We've got uh, quite a few of the Tier 1 Hydroth units, as well as some Quasis mixed in with this, right? Yeah, just a, just a small number. Uh, end up sniping the Scribe before it can take 12 o'clock, or at least warding it off for now. The army retaliating, and there it goes indeed. But with that Spire coming, I wonder what that's going to be for. Because I guess yeah, I could see it being Mutas, because the only splash that we're going to see are the Atreuses, and you can probably focus those down, particularly if you've got the Hydras in the area. You can see Nablim just trying to shark back to use the Cliff Advantage. Cliff Advantage gives you, gives you plus two weapon range when firing down a cliff. So that gets very, very uh, effective. Like, range is kind of king in Cosmonarchy engagements. The Azir record doesn't count because it's melee, but everything else is pretty stacked up, and you can see the reinforcements stepping on in here from the south. This is actually a really rough situation for Hamster to be in because he doesn't really have a lot of uh, units back at home. He was kind of counting on that army staying alive. And I guess since it's quasi streaming in, they're not going to be super cost efficient at killing this. Like, I thought most of this was going to end up getting wiped, but there were no Hydras coming in. But still, you know, what, what other units were made in the in the downtime there? I'm not sure if I missed a production cycle or not. It doesn't look like it. Only now are we getting the Mutat Spire units actually kicking in. We do have an Architect finished. There's going to be an Analog after that. That's a curious choice. I wonder if the analog is to try to particularly reflect like a, a specific debuff or something. I'm not really sure what he's worried about. Uh, he doesn't actually yet know, Hamster, that uh, Nibblime is uh, ahead uh, in tech. I guess maybe you could count this as even in tech, but you would expect the Protoss to have a little bit more. Setting up that fourth base, though. And uh, this uh, small Strider band is going to get caught, unfortunately, by all the Hydras. You can see how much better the Hydras are at dealing with things like the Atreus and the Dracodon and then, of course, Quasilisks are. But still, Quasi Quasis are kind of like chaff and fodder. You can get uh, definitely use them. The uh, Protathalor is a very, very efficient unit at also trying to take fights against things like Atreus. Uh, I do think Architects kind of hit them pretty hard. Uh, but again, the uh, Architect can't hit the uh, Protathalor if there's a bunch of other units in the way, right? So... Something else to keep in mind. We've got a bit of a split force. I love when we have like multiple armies uh, engaging at different locations at kind of the same time. But it looks like maybe the blind is actually going to combine his forces. Um, might take a stab at 12 o'clock. Definitely looks favored in this situation. Architect is kind of protected with these zealots, but it's also kind of sandwiched by all of the, the Dracodins. And a, a bit of an unceremonious end there to this particular match. But yeah, that's going to be GG called with uh, Hamster not really having the ability to keep things going. And the blind stabbing out at multiple angles. So 
yeah, you know, it, it might have been a game where you, you just looked at it and you thought for sure uh, you knew what was going to come. Uh, but despite Hamster killing so many units, I mean, that's the magic of Zerg. Nablime was able to sit, sit back after his early pressure and uh, get into a pretty comfortable situation there. Hamster not yet mastering, and in the chronology here, Hamster not yet mastering ways to defeat him. But I do believe the record has since shifted where uh, Hamster has started to be, uh, you know, a little bit better uh, suited to deal with certain situations like this. Uh, so, yeah, stay tuned for part three of this long-running series where we're going to see if uh, Hamster is indeed going to be able to get on the board or is Nablime going to run away with the whole damn thing. I'm always interested in seeing these two duke it out. And obviously we get to see the, the back and forth, the ebb and flow of a new map. And also I got to use this as an opportunity, a vehicle, a vector to tell you guys about the new fraud launcher, spread the word, get more people in on this thing. If you were worried about, you know, the arduous procedure of installing the project or trying to manage Windows Defender exceptions or whatever the hell, you shouldn't have any of those issues. The most you'll have to do is tell Windows to run the fraud launcher to begin with. I hope you guys enjoy. Hope you guys get everything set up. Let me know if there are any issues. Hop into our Discord server. We got this active, thriving, growing community. We got people like Hamster and the Blind duking it out all the time. And uh, we hope to see you join that list, man. GG.